Hello learners. In this video, we are going to talk about what are X-rays, how X-rays are generated, what are the properties of X-rays, uh, what are different kinds of X-ray spectrum and most importantly, applications of the X-rays. X-rays are discovered in the year 1895 by William Tronchen. He had seen that these radiations are nothing but powerful form of electromagnetic radiations that open new window into the invisible world. These high energy photons possesses extremely short wavelength ranging from 0 0.01 to 10 nanometers and they carry tremendous amount of energy uh, between 100 electron volt and 100 kilo electron volt. After discovery, Ronchen has studied their properties. He has mentioned that X-rays can travel in a straight line. Another important parameter which makes X-rays extraordinary is their ability to penetrate the materials that visible light cannot. They pass through human tissues while being absorbed by the denser materials like bones, creating shadow images that are of great use in the medical diagnostics and remain invaluable in scientific research today. Ronchen, for his study related to the X-rays has received the Nobel Prize in the year 1901. Let's see some characteristics of the X-rays. Already we have seen the properties. Some are reflected over here. Uh, we have seen they are having very small amount of wavelength in the range of certain nanometers. And uh, with respect to that, of course, frequency will be in the higher order because we know wavelength and frequency, those are inversely proportional to each other. Then they are having the high penetrating power and could be pass through soft tissues but absorbed by the denser materials like bones. They are nothing but the electromagnetic radiations that we have seen and basically uh, the origin for the generation of X-rays, uh, electron interactions outside the atomic nucleus is required. How that happens that we are going to see further. Generation of X-rays is explained with the help of uh, two different methods. There are uh, two different X-ray spectrums. So one is continuous X-ray spectrum. Another one is characteristic X-ray spectrum. So what are these terms? How X-rays are generated by these two methods that we will see now. Let's first talk about the continuous X-ray spectrum. Here on screen, you may see a silicon atom which is having nucleus at the center. Then in K, L, M, S shells, there are certain kinds of electrons distributed. When a fast moving electron with high amount of acceleration will come in contact with this atom, it may so happen that electron will penetrate that uh, higher shells and will go towards the nucleus like this. When that external fast moving electron will be in contact with the nucleus of course we know nucleus is having the positive charge and electron is having the negative charge so there will be a force of attraction due to that force of attraction the external electron will slow down and there will be the deacceleration due to that deacceleration it will move slowly through the atom and whatever is the energy difference due to that slowing down that will be emitted in the form of continuous X-ray spectrums. So basically in continuous X-ray spectrum the deacceleration of electrons is responsible to produce the X-rays. The continuous spectrum provides a broad range of X-ray wavelength and is influenced by the tube voltage. Next one is a characteristic X-ray spectrum. When an external electron from the source uh, strikes an atom in the target and expels one of the 
inner shell electrons typically from k or l shell the characteristic spectrum is produced now the electron which has moved from this place and has gone out of the atom it will create a vacancy in the k shells now that vacancy will be filled by a electron which is present in the higher shell like l shell so and of course here you may see the electron from the source so uh, the electron from the l shell will occupy the position of the electron from the k shell so there will be transition from l shell to k shell while having this transition of course we know the energy of k shell is less as compared to energy of the l shell so the while having the transition from l to k k shell whatever is the extra energy that energy is liberated in the form of x rays so procedure is very simple external electron from the source will hit the electron from k shell electron will be out of the atom of course the external electron will also be out of the atom vacancy will be created at the lower atomic shell that vacancy is filled will be filled by the electrons which are present in the higher atomic shells while having transition from higher energy level to lower energy level whatever is the extra energy that extra energy is liberated in the form of x rays so the radiation is characteristic of the target element since the energy of the emitted photon is related to the difference between the energy levels of the participating shells unique to the target material the characteristic lines show up in the x ray spectra as strong peaks are, that are independent of the tube voltage the characteristic spectrum consists of distinct energy lines that depends on the atomic structure of the target material so like this with accelerating electrons the x rays are generated in the characteristic x ray spectrum basically this is the uh, fingerprinting characteristic technique with respect to the materials because for each material the characteristic x ray spectrum and the generated x rays are will be different so x ray spectra will be different basically so this is related to the characteristic x ray spectrum now let's move towards the applications of x rays we have seen what are x rays those are nothing but electromagnetic radiations how they are generated they are generated uh, by deacceleration of electrons in case of continuous x ray spectrum they are generated by accelerating electrons in the characteristic x ray spectrum but where to use the generated x rays that we will see so one of the important uh, thing that you might have seen so many times that in the medical diagnostics for bone imaging after certain kinds of accidents or for the dental radiography ct scans x rays could be used so visual inspections could be done with the help of x rays related to the human body then in uh, scientific research x ray crystallography is the important term uh, to understand the crystal structure of the material generally x ray diffraction kind of techniques could be used so for uh, material science uh, in advanced chemistry x ray crystallography plays the important role then in uh, space science also x ray telescopes study high energy high energy phenomenon like supernova uh, black holes solar corona uh, kind of things so in space science also uh, x rays are having important applications then in industry uh, there are certain kinds of uh, quality control in manufacturing then uh, inspections material testing and um, to ensure safety and structural integrity across the industries x rays 
are used in a wide manner so these are some of the applications related to x-rays uh, hope things are clear to you hope you got the content uh, related to the x-rays we have seen what are x-rays how they are generated what are their properties and applications uh, so if you are having any doubt put that in comment box and once again thank you for watching